Hi, this is Mark Lintonmeyer, and I'm here today talking with John Glazier about social entrepreneurship. And social entrepreneurship is a topic of great interest these days. Many people, both young and old, are finding themselves in a position where starting their own enterprise is the only way to solve the job problem for themselves. And many, many people desire greatly to do good as well as be successful. And that combination is social entrepreneurship. All right, so it's starting a business. It's it's the thing that we're all familiar with, but it's not purely for making a profit. It's for uh, some other motive on top of that. Well, profitability is essential for you to stay alive, but definitely the criteria for the success of the business is both financial and mission-oriented. In fact, there are now forms of business organization that codify that in the bylaws of a company. You can become a certified B Corp, and a B Corp is a benefit corporation. And basically that says when you make decisions affecting the growth of your business, you take into consideration not just the bottom line, but also the impact on the community and the environment. And is this something that you would would aspire that should basically replace regular entrepreneurship? This is something, this is a way to, to uh, run your business life in a way that will be uh, meaningful and sustainable. What, what's the role? What are you proposing here? Well, people have choices when they want to start up an enterprise as to what's the purpose, what's the goal, what do people really, really want to do. And in that context, if the goal is simply financial, then we've got the system that's geared for that. Um, what's emerging in a almost economic counterculture kind of way is a new system that enables corporations, companies, enterprises to be socially conscious, but not just socially conscious in that they do good things from time to time, but socially conscious at the core of their mission, where their mission is both to create a living for themselves and the people that are a part of it, but also to have an impact uh, non-financially on the world. So give, give us an example of one of these things that's been successful so far. Well, there are many corporations that, that aspire to this. Take, for example, a traditional company, a company that wants to install solar panels on rooftops. So it's a business. You know, they, They've got capital needs and expenses and customers and like that. But they're also mission-oriented in that they envision a, a world in which uh, energy production is decentralized. Energy production is... Um, you know, uh, solar and renewable and environmentally friendly. And so they'll make decisions about their business that might not be in their financial self-interest, but help them advance their social goals as well, like accept lower margins on jobs that are, are possible, or to create a donor base for financing solar projects, or to organize a community to put solar projects on municipal buildings in a way that's not terribly profitable for them, but at the same time helps them realize their mission. Pretty much, why would people want to invest? Don't they just want to invest in things that will get them the maximum possible return? But you're proposing that, no, getting the maximum return is really not the, not the point. Well, getting the maximum return is the point if that's your goal. And if your goals are different, those are goals that are shared by many people, including investors. So there's a social impact investment community that wants their dollars to realize returns for them. They don't want their dollars to, you know, just be donated away. But at the same time, they want their, don their dollars to have an impact on the world. And so social impact investing is a kind of investor who will share the mission orient orientation of a social enterprise um, and expect returns, but also know that they're balancing their returns against the impact they want to have. Uh, and you mentioned getting a donor base, and I, I remember in a prior conversation with you, we had talked about uh, how uh, new laws are enabling, basically, is it, this is something like Kickstarter, that just the idea that there's you can have smaller donors uh, feeding these things, don't necessarily have to rely on large venture capital. Right. Th those rules are still in the works, uh, but right now uh, a community-based funding entity is becomingly increasingly profitable or possible. Hopefully, if it happens, it will also be profitable. But the idea is that communities um, can solve the problem of raising capital to invest in themselves by organizing themselves. And then the question is, what should they do with it? And here's where there's many, many 
um, ideas afloat. One of them is, of course, the traditional one. Well, let's invest in something and make a ton of money. Another one would be, let's invest in something that creates the kind of community that we want to live in, knowing that we have to be financially you know, smart and, um, and not be wasteful. But at the same time, we want to put those financial resources to work to create the kind of culture, work life, and local economy that we want. It's there that concepts like the New Work Movement are extraordinarily valuable because they help communities organize their thinking with each other around a set of common values and goals to make practical projects happen to improve the quality of life in ways that people really, really want that to happen. Right. You brought up new work. We should sketch out the relation. If folks don't are familiar with that term, you can go look for videos uh, with me interviewing Fritjof Bergman, who is you know, the founder, perhaps, of this movement. Um, and John, you've, you've been working with him on and off for, for what, 30, 40 years on various things. Yeah. Well, um, new work is a big idea. Um, it's a big idea the way socialism was a big idea or capitalism is a big idea. It's a big idea that helps people organize um, the, an economy and a culture to realize human goals. And so if you are working in a community where you want um, a modern, comfortable livelihood to be available to your community members, but you also want to develop those community members as individuals and innovators and creative people pursuing callings, and at the same time, be efficient, environmentally conscious, and uh, lower the cost of, being, of, of having a, a community life. Those are the three pillars of what new work is about. Meaningful labor, community production, and um, uh, making it possible for people to uh, pursue callings as well as you know, productive you know, labor. Um, so it, it's a way for communities to talk to each other about what they really, really want, and then the nitty-gritty of how to get going, there's a lot of that new work has to contribute to that as well. But those are all social enterprises. Those are all social entrepreneurship, where communities organize ventures to be financially successful, but also to chase those goals. So what new work does is it creates a conversation where communities can decide on what those goals are and organize themselves around them. It's actually very rich. It's ideologically neutral. It asks people, essentially, what is it that you really want and how can we organize ourselves around it? Right. So you've got a number of ways that this could play into the overall new work enterprise. And again, we're not really going to sketch that. I like that you gave a little thumbnail sketch there. But this is supposed to fill a number of needs. One is just that people feel meaningless in their jobs very often. And so working in a socially conscious enterprise is supposed to be one thing that maybe you would find this extremely meaningful in a way that going to work at a regular company might not be. Also, there are just economic areas that are devastated. There are communities, uh, and, and more and more of these, if you if you believe Fritjof, uh, across the world that are, are for one reason or another, their, their economies simply don't function. And so you having traditional business to come in and hire some of these people, first of all, just isn't going to happen, right? Dell Computer is not going to move into downtown Detroit and hire all the, the unemployed, homeless, you know, underemployed people. Um, but then also just, uh, you know, as well as, so we, we need things for these people to do. We need things for that they ways that they can contribute to revitalizing their community. So a lot of the, the kind of things that we're suggesting that a social entrepreneurship uh, company could be doing are exactly the kind of things that have been called in that context community production or something like that. So it's it's not only building solar panels but getting people to do uh, you know leather crafting, repairing things, um, create using three D printers to create goods or you know a, a, any of that kind of stuff. Right? What what am I missing here in terms of the connections? Yeah, you know, the, the dilemma is a really concrete and lived one that, that affects people personally, you know, daily. So um, the, the entrepreneurship is often thought of as highly individualistic. A single individual with a vision raises the resources they need, goes out there and works hard and sweat equity and competes and succeeds, and an individual creates an enterprise. Well, that social entrepreneurship is very important. People 
are motivated as individuals to have meaningful work, to solve big problems, and to organize activity to, to be successful. At the same time, they immediately bump into the fact that they can't do it alone, that it's not an individual enterprise, it's a community enterprise, it needs other people's help, other people's support, and the problems that they want to solve are not individualistic. They tend to end up being community problems. And so if we can combine a community interest in economic development, quality of life, and a culture they want to create with the initiative, creativity, and innovation of an entrepreneur that wants to build something meaningful and, and impactful, those two forces coming together is what social impacting is about, is what community investment is about. Uh, even philanthropy is beginning to look at its role not as you know providing grants and donations to fill certain gaps, but to become an investment source for building sustainable enterprises at a community level. So the individual entrepreneurship combined with solving community problems, that's the nexus that New Work uh, provides uh, a lot of uh, rich content, suggestions, solutions, and a framework in which people can um, decide what to do. Right. So that was a big issue in their discussion of, of community production with, with Fritchov is how, how do we fund these things? So let's say you want your, uh, you know, to start a massive urban, urban gardening project. You know, where do you get the there are going to be expenses in anything involving that. And if you're talking about 3D printing or some of the more advanced kind of community productions beyond just gardening, you get more and more initial expenses. So some of that could be you're, you're saying that uh, social entrepreneurs can just be the providers of grants to, to enable these projects to, to get going. But more importantly, sort of more centrally, you as social entrepreneur uh, can be directly involved in, in launching one of these things. So not only are you then providing if you're if this is a a, a, a multi-urban farm community uh, uh, project for instance that not only are you providing uh, f both work and food for the local people involved but you know like a regular farm you're creating an some surplus that you, then you can sell off so it just becomes something like a regular business but obviously you know in its structure, in the way you interact with the employees, whether you even have employees at all, it just there. It seems like there are a lot of differences uh, between that and a, and, a, and a regular company as well. Right, and right now, um, regular companies, when they incorporate and when they create their corporate governance, fall under a legal system that has certain requirements of them. And if you have investors and shareholders, then the duty of a corporation is to maximize value to its shareholders. But, and this is the the, the sort of new development taking place, uh, a B Corp is a benefit corporation that in, empowers its governors to take into consideration community goals and environmental impact as well as financial return because the stakeholders that they're serving have interests beyond financial. And that makes it possible for a community to think of itself as a benefit corporation, something that needs to create you know, an economic vitality and it needs to work financially, but their goal isn't to maximize that. Their goal is to make that be sustainable. There's a threshold that you reach that's like good enough. We're alive. We're growing. We're doing well. Let's divert our other resources into creating the kind of world experience opportunities that we want. And so that's sort of one of the, the new forms of social uh, organization that's uh, impacting the business world and a great opportunity for individuals and communities to actually pursue the visions that they really really want to chase um, and then with regard to the funding and all um, it, then it is kind of like a regular business I mean where does that money come from the money's got to come from motivated sources that want to get their money back and also, you know, earn a return on their money. Um, but at the same time, they want to create those outcomes that you're chasing. So everything depends upon writing the right proposal and finding the right funding sources with an interest in supporting that kind of problem solving that you want to chase. Okay. And you had given me some good examples before on, on you know, you've mentioned a solar panel company. Can you go on a little bit about another example or two? 
you know, um, I want to uh, make it a, a two, two sides of this. One, it can be any enterprise whatsoever. Just, just yesterday, I went to a, a luncheon celebrating uh, a local um, ice cream making company called Jenny's Ice Cream out of Columbus, Ohio, and they got themselves a B Corp certification. Uh, there's a standard for that. You know, at, at how do you take into account your community? How do you take into account your your environment? Um, what's your global wa uh, cool, uh, warming footprint? Your carbon footprint? Other values that w might measure, you know, uh, a, a socially responsible business. Now they're in the business of creating and selling ice cream. They got ice cream parlors. This isn't solving big world problems like you know, energy production and like that. But they've organized an organ uh, a company that enables their workers to not just work for the company, but also work in their communities and be compensated for it because that's the role this company wants to have. So the question of what do you really, really want to be, what are the values you want to chase, and how to build an organization around it applies to anything, even an ice cream company. At the same time, I want to point out that most social entrepreneurs really do tackle the large problems of our society and our economy and see technology as providing uh, big solutions to those problems. Um, so the other day, I'm working with a, an entrepreneur who has an idea for a racetrack. He wants to create a racetrack, you know, an entertainment venue where people come and watch cars race. But the, the trick here is that all of the cars are running on alternative fuel. So what they wanted to do was to create a place where people could show their technological innovations for alternative fuel, non-carbon based transportation and have fun with it by creating races um, where they could demonstrate the performance of their uh, non-carbon based cars. Anyway, there's um, a small not grand business idea, but one that t is tied to the issues of the day and the kind of company that they create around it will not only be you know, financially successful in terms of having a surplus of net income after covering expenses, but also performing certain functions, uh, generating, chasing certain goals. And then the way you organize the internal culture of that company and its relationship to its bigger community there's where new work values, ideas, and concepts can help frame a discussion and help people chart a plan. Anyway, there are many examples from big to small. Um, and, what, and that's kind of what makes it very attractive to a social entrepreneur, someone who wants to create something and have an impact and success at the same time. So how do you find your, your, your niche, I guess? Uh, you know, I usually think of new work as a way of Framing overall social problems so that if you are trying to do something helpful to society, then you know, you know where, where to go. Obviously, if you have a passion about race cars or about something in particular, then that's going to be the thing that you want to get something going about. Um, but there, so, social, social entrepreneurship, you know, there's there's a lot of that out there already, not necessarily uh, being run by people who know what new work is, know you know, ha have this overall vision in mind of, uh, on the one hand, using this to uh, create an alternative e economic system, right? An ice cream company is not thinking about how to create an alternative economic system necessarily, um, or also en enable their, this you did, did mention from the ice cream company, uh, enable their employees to live balanced new work lives, right? That, uh, so, so I guess there are two questions here. There, there, one is, what are the measures beyond having a, uh, a socially conscious goal that we would need to take to turn your uh, social enterprise into a new work enterprise? Uh, well, let's just deal, deal with that one first. So, you know, what's interesting is that um, new work is the kind of uh, framework and, and orientation that can make sense out of a lot of things that aren't necessarily intentionally new work oriented. I mean, New Work picks up the current state of problems that people are dealing with, the values that they're chasing, and it provides a tool for getting intentional about those things and also bringing in other resources to make them, them bigger. But at the same time, 
uh, on the ground, nitty gritty, people living lives, solving problems, trying to end up with a meaningful, impactful life, are incorporating and expressing new work values without any knowledge of what new work is. That's one of the reasons why new work is relevant, is that it picks up things that are really, really going on, as opposed to impose them from, from an outside ideological framework. So there's that. And then with regard to the, the larger question of how does one start this, how does one move it in an intentional direction, the main thing to think about um, is what is the problem that you as an individual want to solve? You know, what is the value you want to create through the work that you do? And that's a very hard question. And I believe that once people begin to ask and explore what are the problems that they want to devote themselves to solve, a deep understanding of those problems takes them out of a single individual enterprise and into a community setting. And so advice to entrepreneurs would be, you know, looking for opportunities to create the venture that's going to be a, a meaningful, impactful organization that you can create. That will bump you into your community. <laughs> and uh, doing that in, in relationship with, in context with, engagement with your community will ensure a couple of things. One, that you will be impact, impactful with the community. And two, that the community might be impactful for you in the terms of providing you with support. And by that kind of engagement and interaction, you can get more intentional about what kind of community we want to build through the enterprises that we want to support. And it's there that the New Work Framework really helps people get strategic and intentional and practical about you know, what's accomplishable um, both locally and you know, for the, the values that the entrepreneur is chasing. Uh, often these things need a champion. Um, uh, you know, communities getting together to, to try to solve their problems really need to have entrepreneurially minded individuals who will take the lead in an enterprise or another and what the community should be doing is mustering the ecosystem of support being engaged in what are the values that we're, we're chasing and what do we want to end up with it's there that new work is most relevant and it is tending toward a new economy even the the highly capitalistic we want to be successful Jenny's ice cream parlors are helping to create a new economy because they are creating a different relationship to work, a different sense of what's the purpose of our organization in our communities and in our economies, what's our relationship to our workers. Those are the nitty gritty practical things of new work that will in the end give rise to a different economy. What new work does is tries to make all that intentional and strategic and on the ground in life and in individuals they're just trying to solve problems seize opportunities muster the resources and do what can be done in that context however um, new work will make them more powerful more intentional and open up um, visions and opportunities for them by adding new work to this equation and social entrepreneurship being the uh, the the main means to doing that, you're adding three elements over and above what you would be adding perhaps if you started a regular business. First, you've, you've answered my what was going to be my second question, which is what role will this overall enterprise play in society? And, you know, and, you know, look at the economic problems it, that it shouldn't just be, well, we're going to provide a little bit of employment for people, or we're going to provide a, a, you know, hopefully most businesses want to at least provide a good product uh, in an affordable way, but they're not necessarily thinking, you know, what, what, you know, what is it that is most needed out there, uh, in terms of supporting the infrastructure that people need to live, uh, reducing the cost of living for everybody. You know, that's usually not a question people, how can I reduce the cost of living for my customers? You know, uh, it would be, but just approaching your whole enterprise with that sort of, uh, social approach in mind is one new element. Uh, another is just what role will this uh, enterprise play in my employees' lives? That's not just I'm giving them a job and that's all they could want, but no, that one of the insights of new work is that most jobs in the way that they are administered in having to work 40 hours a week, perhaps doing a lot of uh, tedious work 
is uh, and and not being necessarily connected with the end product, not necessarily feel like you're doing something meaningful, um, that that is deadening to people. And so even just say, I'm only going to hire, I know this sounds like a, a horrible capitalistic in, in, in terms of a, a ex exploitative thing, I'm only going to hire people part time. Uh, you know, a lot of people will do that now just because they don't want to pay benefits. Um, but but we're suggesting that no, especially if, if you're you're saying that maybe there's something built in that, you know, we want our employees to work here so many hours a week, but then we will also help them hook up with volunteer opportunities in their communities or something like that so that the extra time that we are giving them, um, one, is not entirely uncompensated, and two, that they have some direction in that, that they will, they will be able to do. Maybe you don't find loading the ice cream on the trucks uh, fulfilling if you had to do it 40 hours a week, but if we have you do that 20 hours a week and then we set you up doing another 10 hours, you know, we work with you to figure out something uh, in a volunteer aspect or, or even, you know, just some other aspect of what this company does, um, that it is not just creating the ice cream, but it's going out and, uh, you know, I don't know what, what the, <laughs> providing it free to poor kids, what would, what would the, <laughs> what would the, uh, without getting into this example in particular, what would, a uh, I mean, is it just become, you know, like a lot of companies, in addition to the the product that they primarily create, they're trying to do something social. So the you know we'll also have a, a charity fund drive or something. You know, so it, the idea is not just doing that as a, a one off kind of thing, but having that as an integral part of your business plan. So that maybe it is even you know that you are loading ice cream on the truck twenty hours a week, but then you're spending uh, five hours a week in the community garden that this company helped produce. I think that the um the best way to answer is to frame the context in which real people find themselves. So the founders of Jenny's Ice Cream find themselves in a context where they have a business idea, a really cool recipe, a notion about how to uh, uh, fresh ingredients and local distribution. And they've got all these sort of cool ideas around a business concept. And they ask themselves, what do we really, really want? And part of what they really, really want is a certain kind of relationship to their community and a certain relationship with their workers. And they do, for example, donate like 40, 30 to 40 percent of their profitability each year to the community uh, development organizations that they want to support. But the context that they're in um, is, we're, you know, we're, we're starting this enterprise and here's our constraints. Many other people are in context where uh, they're not just a, a single enterprise starting up in, a, uh, in an already developed economy, but you've got large communities so trying to solve big problems. The city of Detroit is an example where there's trying to be the context of them asking themselves the question, what do we really, really want, is bigger than that of a single enterprise with a cool idea for an ice cream product. Um, the resources that they have available to put into play to create what they really, really want are, are, are larger and, and the importance of using them wisely, you know, uh, greater and like that. In my world, I, uh, this is a very uh, poor part of the country in, in, in Appalachian, Ohio, and communities are, are asking, you know, how can we solve endemic problems that we all share? And it's not a single enterprise that we want uh, to, to start up, but our context is, you know, the quality of life uh, here. So lowering the cost of, of being alive um, is a, a very important part of a community context. For example, here we've aggregated our, our electrical um, uh, consumers so that we can negotiate a, a lower price for energy by being a larger group. We've also put into that uh, social values of what people want. So they would like to start and stimulate a local economy of energy production. And so when we went to uh, providers of electricity, we said, look, in year two, 30% of the energy we buy from you, we would like to be locally produced. <laughs> um, and that's part of the contract that we enter into. So we've created a market where local producers of energy can sell into that market and grow a local economy. Now, there's a context which is bigger than Jenny's ice cream, where they have to decide you know, to give their workers free time for volunteer work and for quality of life work. Even in that context, 
you create a more productive worker. <laughs> um, people are happier, uh, people are more balanced, and importantly, the sources of innovation for growing and developing get cultivated when individuals, um, you know, it's not a, a balanced work life where you can be bored and pissed off at work and then have fun. It's, it's also a self-development so that you, as a human being, get you know, to chase the goals that you're after. That creates better, more talented people, even at the level of the enterprise. Anyway, the context determines what problem you're trying to solve and what tools you've got to solve it. And in both of those contexts, the value of new work and the reason why it's so um, timely is that it begins with a discussion of what do you value? What's what do you really want? What would the what would life look like? I mean, richness. People want to be rich, but richness isn't necessarily money. Richness is time. Richness is resources to be able to fill that time with meaningful activities. We live in a world where money makes that possible, but there are other ways of making that possible. Anyway, I'm just saying, people in a context at the table. What problem are they solving? By beginning with what do you really, really want? And then organize an enterprise that tries to realize those outcomes. That's the in that new work has for uniting people. Um, it's not an ideological value system. It's not a capitalist versus socialist system. It's really human beings confronting the conditions of life and asking themselves first, what do they value? What do they want? And then what are the constraints in which we got to live to chase what we value? All right. So you've talked about the connection, the role, the connection one of these enterprises uh, might have to society, uh, how it relates to employees. But the last thing is sort of you as entrepreneur, if you're making a pitch to people watching this, you should go out today and start start a, a social entrepreneurial venture. Um, you know, there's I can certainly see and I, I, I know instances of people who then, you know, take on one of these organizational challenges as their thing, as their calling, and they find this meaningful and they want to give as much of their time as they can and they're untiring and they'll work 80 hours a week. But for most people, their constitutions are not set up that way to be that, that you know, maybe I do want to, uh, you know, create an enterprise or, or even something very small that will uh, further some socially important goals to me. But I don't want to drive myself crazy, uh, you know, having to do the work that is necessary to get a startup business off the ground. Most startup businesses fail. Like there's so, there's so many things that would make one run away from this as as a, a uh, someone sympathetic with the cause of new work. What? How? How can you change your approach as an entrepreneur to not make this uh, hell for you? Ah. Well, you know, uh, you're absolutely right. Um, the the traits and qualities of an entrepreneur who sees that kind of activity as their calling is a rare breed, uh, and is not for everybody. And is um, you know, um, uh, an ordinary life is not possible if you pursue something like that. Um, so, for people that are not, um, for whom the quality of life does not call them into that kind of activity, nevertheless. Um, there's many ways of, of participating in uh, uh, changing the economy, changing the community in a way in which does fit what goals you have. I mean, if my goal was to be a, a filmmaker and I needed, however, to earn enough money uh, uh, you know, to pay the bills, I would love to go work for Jenny's Ice Cream because they are going to give me time to develop my interests on my own. Um, and and the benefit that I would get isn't, you know, I'm contributing to their entrepreneurial enterprise and, and I'll try to be a good worker and help as much as I can, but the benefit that I get from them in their benefit corporation uh, serves my interests, my goals, my values. Um, and a community approach to such a problem tries to make those opportunities possible for people. Um, so how one fits in, not everyone is the entrepreneur. It is, I think, important for, for people to ask themselves, what do they really, really want? And what are my choices and how can I maximize that? And part of that is, you know, to what wagon do you hitch yourself and what do you work to try to help create? And another one is, how do you get to, 
How do you perform as an active member of your community? One of the ways that everybody can improve the quality of their life is engaging with their community. They can't help it. They've got friends. They've got family. They've got relationships to organizations in their geographic space. Everyone is a member of a community. And making their community participation self-conscious, intentional, and engaging um, for, you know, contributing to how you help your community solve its problems um, is another way of contributing, as it were, you know, to uh, improving your own life while you're improving others at the same time. Many things, many ways, many avenues. And the value of, of new work is I think that it provides us with a language in which we can talk to each other where we're not forcing each other to agree with the individual values that enhance our lives. But we're trying to create a culture in which we all can chase the values that enhance all of our lives. And that helps us all. I mean, I will be delighted to see someone else realizing the values that they're chasing because it will improve the quality of my life, even though it ain't me that's doing it. You know, it's um, so I many different ways in many perspectives from where one stands in the ecosystem. But the fact is we are in an ecosystem. We are a node in a network and getting intentional, conscious and um, grounding ourselves in our values there. That's the call to action for everybody. Um, whether or not they're an entrepreneur or a, a civic leader or at the table where these problems are being addressed, that's being alive. <laughs> what are you doing? Where are you going? What are you chasing? What do you value? That's everybody. All right. Well, thank you, John. Anytime. Um, interesting stuff. Uh, I'd encourage people to um, understand deeply the problems that they see as needing solutions. Because by understanding the nature of the problem, you, you will engage all of the other problems that we've got. And that, that pulls us into this grand venture of making the world a better and more beautiful place.